In this presentation, we will start to create a course using the Teachable platform. Now, we're also going to be using the Stack Skills platform, which is a company, the company that uses a Teachable platform. So we'll be looking at Stack Skills and Teachable at the same time when we think about this process. In other words, we'll learn how to put the information on a Teachable platform, and you'll also be looking at uh, a Stack Skills information if you want to work with or see if you can uh, work with a company of stack skills to help to to market your courses as well get ready for business online business here we are on a teachable platform that platform being owned by stack skills so this is owned by stack skills so we're going to be uploading our information to stack skills which is a company that can help to market the courses as well they use a teachable platform now, Stack Skills is also related to Stack Commerce. So, if you want to work with uh, Stack Commerce, you can go here and, and apply and, and see if uh, you can work with them. And this is not an advertisement in any ways. I, I wor I've worked with them before, so I have access to the platform here. And you know, so if you wanted to look into that, you can. I'm not getting paid, in other words, for for this. Uh, it's just a, another platform I thought would be worth looking into. Now, they use Teachable. So they use Teachable and they work with multiple instructors on a Teachable platform, which you could create your own platform, right? You might use your own Teachable platform and or work with, with Stack Commerce, who also happens to use a Teachable platform. Uh, so you can you could see Teachable and you could see basically working with something like a Stack Commerce. There's other types of, of uh, courses out there or people that bundle courses together that often use something like a Teachable or a Thinkific type platform in order to, to do that process. So those are going to be those options. So I'm going to go back to the Stack Skills. So this is Stack Skills. This is a teachable formatted website. And again, the Stack Skills owned and Stack Commerce owned by the same uh, organization are compiling courses together by different authors and then doing a revenue share kind of process similar to a Udemy or something uh, like that. But they're using the teachable platform to do so. All right, so I'm going to go into the author. I'm going to upload a course here for it. So here's the basic layout for uh, for the Teachable platform. You got your information on the left-hand side, author, sales information, settings. We're going to be focusing down here on the, just sim simply the course creation. So we're in the courses item down here. We're going to go up and we're going to create a new course. So I'm just going to create a new course. Now, remember, we've created this course in uh, Udemy. So we saw the platform here. This is the course. We've taken a look at part of it that we can put on Skillshare. And then we've taken a look at how we can construct this in Thinkific. And so now we're moving over to a Teachable type of platform. Now, I'm assuming you, you don't have Thinkific and uh, Teachable. So we're going to be going back to Udemy as kind of like the source model. I'm going to say, all right, here's my Udemy course. I've kind of uploaded it there. I have the outline. I'm going to take that outline and now put it into Teachable, whether it be your own Teachable you know, course platform or some other company that own that is run or on or using a teachable platform such as Stack Commerce and Stack Skills here. All right, so then I'm going to go to the to the landing page and we're going to go ahead and copy the title. So I'm going to say the title of the course. Let's go back on over to uh, stat to the admin here. I'm going to add another item, another course, another item. It's going to be a course that we're going to add. And then I'm going to put the course title up top, course title, and then course uh, subtitle. So we might want the subtitle. I could pick up the subtitle that we had here. Let's do that. So I'll pick up the subtitle and do that. So uh, this course is not taught by a marketing professional, but by an accountant who now works online. Stop full time. All right. Online full time. It just got to have some kind of ring to it, that thing. I don't know. It might be just me. Maybe it's just me. But I think it kind of rings there. And then I'm going to create the course. And then it just it jumps right to the curriculum page now. So now we're going to be thinking about the curriculum page. So what we have, same kind of layout. We've got the section titles here, the headings. And then we're going to have the detail within it. So section headings and then the detail. We've got the preview button up top. We have a bulk upload again. And then we have the new section. So this is a new section. And, and this one, notice once you create the section, you can't really, it's not as easy to, to move back and forth between the sections and, and whatnot. So I like to create these more in order. Like it's easier to create these in order. Whereas uh, when, so let me just show you. 
if I go to the first section, this is going to be the overview section. So I'm going to go back to Udemy. I'm going to go into the curriculum in Udemy. And I want to preview the curriculum so I can see all my sections and whatnot. And this is where I'm going to be pulling the information from. So I'm going to go back into Udemy. And then like if I pull up the screen here. So there's the screen on the right. I'm going to close this back up. And then I'm going to go back down and say we want the course content. So here's the course content. And I'm just going to pull over the same description. So the first is the introduction. So I'm going to say there's the section that I want, which is going to be the introduction. The intro. Now they already gave me a section up top, so I'll just edit it. And if you didn't see that, I did that really quick. It's a little pencil over here. Pencil is going to edit that first section, and then we'll add more sections as we go. So we'll say that's paste there and that's a little like if you go too far over it, it it does weird stuff but i'm gonna you'll get used to it everyone all these platforms have their own little kind of weirdness to it now they already have an, a section here so you could then add your first item to that section i'm gonna go ahead and hit this little plus and close it just so we can add a new one from scratch so i'm gonna say delete that and then I'm going to add a new lecture. So I'm going to say add a new lecture. Now note you don't have a whole all the options that you remember when you saw on Thinkific when you added a new lecture and it's like add a lecture, add a video, add a this, add a that. And this one they're all the same, right? It's all a lecture, but then you have the option to do a bunch of different things with that lecture. So that's why I think a lot of people think it's a lot, you know, more simple to add uh to add the courses to this platform because you really only, you don't have all those options to have just a download or this or that but i think it's a little bit more restrictive because you can do most of the same stuff here but i i you know it feels like to me you could do to do more here so i don't want to misrepresent them but we're going to say 105 is going to be our lecture so let's pick that up over here so i'm going to say here's our video files so let's pick that up here and obviously i've had more experience with thinkific too so because i I've, I've uploaded more courses there than here i'm going to copy that title and then i'm going to go back here so that makes me somewhat biased is what i'm saying here i'm going to then paste that there and then i'm going to say uh, i don't need that last part of it because this is not relevant and so I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to go into it. This is kind of a long way, by the way. And then we'll, we'll go to the short way, which is the bulk upload. And then we're going to add content. So now we want to add the content. And I think they really like the drag and drop is the best way to go here, typically. So the, they want the drag and drop. The drag and drop. Not a, not a dragon's drop, but a drag and then drop drag and then drop so i'm going to pick up the 105 and pick that up to the drag and drop it's a drag and drop drop of a dragon that makes sense okay so then there we have that so now we have the video file now we do have like the other options here like add a file uh add text add a quiz so you can see all the options are, are in the same kind of section here so and it looks like you can add multiple things in one section which is kind of neat you know you, you can have the video and then the quiz underneath it and it'll kind of stack it on top of each other so you want to practice like mess around with this and see how the preview will look and so then you can add uh, the code example and ask add uh, custom code so what we really want to do is that is to have the video files and then possibly add text and uh, other files below such as PDF files and we have that we have that option so it is uh, looks great so i'm going to go back then i'm going to go back now to i'm going to go back again to our course uh to just the outline so there we have it there's our first item now we're going to go to the next one let's go to the next section here i'm going to do this we'll do this the faster way this time now we've done the slow way now we'll do the fast way. so i'm going to copy the next section we got two items in it uh, 115 and 125 115 125 so then i'm going to add another section and then you got to go up top to get the new section and then i'm going to go paste there create the section so now we have another section and then we we can add the uh, lectures below it but what i want to do now is to do the bulk upload 
Now, this is what I'm talking about when it's different than Thinkific. In Thinkific, I can bulk upload into either section that I want. Right now, when I do the bulk upload, it's only going to upload to the last section that I'm currently in. To me, I think that's that's not as, I think Thinkific is kind of nicer in that way because I'd like to bulk, uh, you know, if I have a long course and I use the bulk upload, I'm going to have to move all the content to the section I want it in, which is kind of annoying. But when you create it from top to bottom, it's not a problem. So I'm going to, so that's just a little difference to me. And again, I think Thinkific has the edge on that. Choose the files. I'm going to say choose files. I'm going to pick up the uh, this one and this one. So those two. And I'm going to say add those. So let's go ahead and add those. And then I'm going to bulk upload those two. I'm going to bulk up with it. Bulk and upload. So now we've done the bulk upload. Now notice again, it, it didn't upload them in the order we would like. You could say, well, I put that one in first and then this one second, but it didn't do it. So I would do it section by it's another reason. I wouldn't bulk upload the entire course and then put in the sections because it's then you have to move these things around. So what I would do is do it one section at a time, bulk upload one section at a time, then reorder your your uh, your lectures here so they fit. Now the other thing that's kind of a problem, notice it says draft here. That's a problem because if I was to preview this, then they don't show up in the draft mode. So just note that you, you gotta say, you gotta publish it when you're testing it, even though that doesn't mean it's going live yet. It just means that it's gonna be published once it's live. So, so make sure to, to realize that so that you can preview what's going on. So I gotta go into each of these things and then say, please publish this. And that doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean it's live because the course isn't live. But when I preview it, then I should be able to see it. So I'm going to go, all right, that one is published now. I should be able to see it. I'm going to go into this one. And let's go ahead and uh, publish it. So I'll go ahead and publish that. And then I'm going to go back to the prior screen. And we should be able to view that one. So then I'll go ahead and publish this one. And then I'm going to go uh, publish that, please. And then that one should show up in our preview. And then I'm going to go back on over. So then if we were to preview it, we've got something to actually preview, which is nice because when you preview something and nothing's there, it's kind of, kind of pointless. So then we're going to go into the content and this is, this is the way the layout. Notice it's very similar now. They've kind of copied each other, think of it and teachable that is uh, in terms of their of their interface and their layout this one remains open that's going to be one of the uh, differenting differentiating factors whereas think if it closes every time you go into a new uh, content section so that's what it looks like so far if I close this back out then uh, the other thing we, we had was uh, adding a PDF file so if you were to go into this one you can add the PDF file to the same section so I could say all right let's go to add a file and this is, this is really kind of neat, something I like about Teachable. I mean, you can put a video file and then just stack it on top of a, of a text file and stack it on top of, of a quiz and even. With, with Thinkific, they added that feature. And so you can now do that in Thinkific. And, never, and you couldn't before. You had to do the, the PowerPoint separate. So you got the video file. Thinkific can still add text now below the video file, which I like, and, and uh, the, add a file, like a PDF file. But uh, then you can also stack here a quiz within the same video file kind of format, which I believe, which I don't think you can do on Thinkific. And you can stack some other stuff. So you might have a little bit more flexibility in terms of combining all different things into one, uh, into one upload area within uh, Teachable. But um, so I'm going to go back to the add file. So I'm going to choose a file and say, well, what if we wanted to add that PDF file we were working with. Let's add that PDF file here. Say, what if I went back and said, I want to be picking up from this file. And then I want to go into the PowerPoint, the pointing with power. And then I want to go into that 115. This is the PDF file now. So I've added the PDF file. So we can add that to the lecture component like that. So there it is. And then and I also want to make it downloadable. So I want to make that one downloadable. You have to hit the little download thing if you would like to make it downloadable. So there we have that. And then we can also, if I was to do a bulk upload, 
with a PDF file. Let's just test that out and say, can I just do a bulk upload if I had a bunch of PDF files to upload? So there's my PDF file. I'm going to try to just upload that separately just to test that out. Just test that out. Looks like you can bulk upload that just like Thinkific. So now we've added the PDF file uh, in, in two different formats. We added it basically as a, uh, a bulk upload format. I need, to, I need to change the draft and we've added it to this video file lecture. So you can see you have the same kind of functionality here. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to say make this one public, please. That making it public thing, by the way, is kind of annoying too. I mean, you would, it'd be nice if they had it that you could make it public on this screen. And maybe they do, maybe I haven't figured it out, I haven't, but uh, to actually go into each lecture and make it public, you know, you would think it being public would be kind of the default before you publish the course so that you can preview it. So, but any, not a big deal, little, little annoying, that's all. And then I'm going to say, let's preview the course and see what we have so far. So this is what we have. So then if I was to, to go through this, let's just check it out and go through the the screen here so there's the first one and then i can i don't see i don't see also see the little the button that allows me to just go to the next course i don't see that button here but again i might be missing it so you'd have to just actually go down here to the side screen not a big deal but i kind of like having that other item so here is this one and then i'm going to go to the zoom so zoom and there's that now now this one up top that's where we put the added file in so it's got a video file and then below it it's got the pdf the pdf showing in this format so you can actually just kind of see the pdf here and then you also typically will want to make the pdf files down downloadable because that's kind of the point to me of the pdf file so then they should be able to download this thing so they would say uh, go to the last now here it is at the bottom so you'd hit this this item to download it so they can scroll through it here and if you make it downloadable then they can download it so pretty much same type of format as uh, as the as the thinkific site will have but but notice the thinkific site i don't believe if you have the video file and then the pdf attached i don't think it's actually going to display the pdf now if you made the pdf in a different lecture then it would right so it's a little bit it's a little bit different in that for in that format, but you can have a attached PDF file just for downloadable purposes uh, a, as well. So so those are some of the differences here with uh, Teachable. Now I'm not going to go through the whole thing with with Teachable because uh, the the pages and stuff or whatnot are going to be are going to be standardized with uh, with Stack Skills and Stack Commerce here but similar process that you would have with with making the the page for your description page that we saw in thinkific and your landing page and your pricing and all that kind of stuff it's it's similar options there you can take a look at the comparison between the two uh the two platforms to see what their options are for you know the pricing and what kind of things you can do there but you can see the actual course creation very similar if you if you start if you learn udemy and then then many of these other teaching platforms are going to be very similar except skillshare is a little bit different because they have a little bit different niche they're looking for but most other you know full-scale teaching platforms that are that are geared towards longer courses or courses that you can do pretty much as m many different options as you want with which are these core these platforms are designed to do they're designed to allow you to do whatever you want even though most people mainly do just instructional video type courses with some uh, some other options like files and stuff uh, they're designed to have a lot of flexibility and so those types of platforms are becoming more and more standardized so i you know if you're starting out you kind of want to learn udemy and then take those skills and, and you can apply them to these other teaching platforms and more and more that uh, application to these other teaching platforms will be easier and easier because it seems that they're starting to copy each other so that they copy best practices and therefore become more uh, similar, more standardized to some degree. That's it for now. Let's get out of here.